welcome back to Sarah's Music. We're in Hamburg and we have the whole beautiful Leishalle all to ourselves. My guest today is the young Russian pianist Daniel Trifonov. Daniel is already a superstar in our classical music world, and although I have and love all of his recordings, today's the first time I'll be hearing him play live. I'm really looking forward to it. Daniel Trifonov had his first piano lesson aged five, and his first professional appearance was at the age of eight, playing a piece he had composed himself. He then won two of the top piano competitions aged 20, and this launched his stratospheric rise to fame. He now plays solo recitals and concertos all over the world. Top pianists always have several pianos to choose from in every hall they play in. Daniel is choosing which Steinway piano to use for his recital here in Hamburg. a bit more for that program um, balance of uh, not balance uh, cohesiveness of registers I think that's important for Rachmaninoff and, uh, trying out the pianos before him was the legendary Menahem Pressler there's over 60 years difference in age between the two of them but they are good friends and we're happy to see each other So Daniel, we are in a, a Hamburg cafe house. You're really all over the world. Do you actually do you like discovering these new cities, or do you know them all already? Well, I knew them all already when I was seven or eight because that was my main hobby when I was a kid to look at the maps. I would study and memorize maps of different cities, and when later or in teenage when I started going on concerts in all those cities, I already knew them all. 
So when you come to a city, it's like you know it already. <laughs> well, of course, there are still some cities where <laughs> map of which I haven't got um, earlier on. As is, I, I usually, um, I usually like walking in a new city, exploring it, and. Do you need your your GPS, or can you just go? Well, usually I look at the map before uh -huh. I leave the hotel, and then I. And just go. Amazing. That's fantastic. That's good for difficult piano pieces as well to have this ability to to look and then go. <laughs> for list, it's good. <laughs> do you have a piano in your hotel room, or do you always have to practice in the hall? No, I usually practice in the in the hall. Is it a lonely life being a soloist? I'm a home player. I mean, I'm I'm always with with a, a, an orchestra, and we we're together all the time, which is sometimes too much. But um, you're you're alone all the time. <laughs> well, not all the time. From from time to time, I travel with my girlfriend. But uh, of course, she's a pianist too. Uh, yeah. She used to be pianist. Yeah. And uh, well, of course, there are a lot of a lot of times when I'm by myself. And um, somehow, I would say it was especially more difficult when I was younger, when I was 17, 18, when I just started playing. And I just started going on tours. At that time, it was mainly in Italy, because I I, I just won the um, competition in Italy when I was 16, and when there were several years when I played a lot in Italy, and that was in a way difficult because it was the first experience for me of being alone for so long. I've heard that you have some very interesting practice rituals. Well, they're not really rituals; they're more of explorations and inventions. And every day they can be quite different. Um, you should never stop ex exploring and searching for new ways. For example, one day I found um, I found that swimming helps a lot for the upper back because you know for pianists very often commonly have problems with upper, upper back shoulders. Sit, sit, sit like this. Yeah, time, very yeah. often. And just the fact of sitting, uh, and of course the swimming helps a lot. And then one day I was just thinking that well we always warm up in the air when there is no piano when we're just backstage we very often we just play air piano so why not to play water piano mm -hmm. so when i was uh, when i was swimming i just started imitating the motions of a second rachmaninoff piano concerto and uh underwater the, underwater yeah so with the water until here and so then I just ended up playing completely the piece in the water. People, of course, look. <laughs> they must have thought. <laughs> Everyone's doing their laps in your. But the thing is that um, you, in water, you can't just play with fingers. You have to play all the way from your back. And that really opens up all the muscles here. So then later, when you go on stage, even if the piano is very heavy, it won't feel heavy. It will actually have this kind of round and open, uh, open going sound. I think it's great that you're doing that you're thinking about uh, the different way of getting sounds and it's going to be a real help to the next generation of, of pianists. Well, I think also very important uh, for for young generation uh, is that to always remember about the um, that the way we play of course um, we need also to take a physical care of it and stretching or yoga or swimming it all can uh, seriously increase the, both the endurance during practice and the uh, quality of sound itself. That's all from Sarah's Music for today. The concert is sold out, the lights hall is about to fill up and I'm really looking forward to the concert. If you ever get a chance to hear Daniel live, do it. He is really phenomenal. See you next time. Bye-bye.
challenging you to take the Sarah's Music Horn Challenge, like so many wonderful musicians before you. What do you think? Sure. <laughs> okay, so you put your. So that's right. Is Whichever. This way or, or opposite. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's going very well. So like this, like this. You put your hand in Where? the here in the bell. Uh -huh. Here. Okay. Yeah. In the bell, yeah, and then you put your finger, and you just literally go. Ready? <laughs> oh, and he gives it back to me really quickly. <laughs> that was pretty good, maladiets. <laughs>